Golden Black Live, uh, and joined by Stacy Clarity and Kyle Charter. Stacy is we're, we're 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 doing a balancing act of sorts. We're gonna we're gonna <laughs> move forward. That's a story that nobody needs to hear just yet. We are here to talk Purdue football. First, I want to thank our sponsors real quick: Hilton Garden Inn, and uh, and State Farm agent Trent Johnson, and of course John Basham and the folks at Basham Rental. And even Coach Matt Painter, he's walking by. He'll be on the show here at 155, but he's not a sponsor. So, uh, <laughs> Stacy, uh, we'll get right to right to it. Uh, Purdue, Michigan State. Uh, you're going to be in the car here shortly, making your way to East Lansing. Um, I ask you the same thing every week. What do you expect to see? It's going to be a really difficult test for Purdue. Um, not, Michigan State's not only number two in the country, but they're playing that game obviously at Michigan State and even though maybe the Spartans aren't as good of a team as they've been the last couple years defensively. Just the way that they play defense is, I think, going to make it tough for Purdue to really put up points. Um, David Blau had a really good week last week, um, being able to complete a lot of short balls. I think Michigan State's going to make that difficult. Um, maybe it needs, um, David's going to have to maybe go down the field a little bit more this week. Um, there could be opportunities there, but you've got to be accurate on those deep balls. He hasn't been that yet in the one game that we saw. Um, defensively, you know, I think Purdue has a chance to, at least they're going to want to stop the run. Yeah. Um, Daryl Hazel said, said on his radio show on Thursday that they're going to maybe take a little bit different approach on that. I can't remember his exact quote, but he said something about putting more big guys in the box or on the, uh, up front or something like that. So, you know, I think Purdue's going to really sell out to try to stop their run and make Connor Cook beat them. Connor Cook has beat them before. Um, we'll see if he can do it again. But, I, but just generally, I think, you know, a really tough challenge, obviously, going on the road facing one of the best teams in the country. I don't think the Spartans secondary is as good as it has been in the past. The problem for Purdue is going to be taking advantage of that. I just think that Michigan State is is so good in its front four, uh, really a group that goes deeper than four. Yeah, absolutely. With Shalit Calhoun and the others, that that to me is a is a matchup difficulty for Purdue. Uh, you know, I think Purdue's offensive line is okay, but not as good as what many had hoped or mm -hmm. thought it might be, especially. And you know, they really haven't been that. You know, hasn't been as good a running team as what Purdue had hoped either. But you know, especially I think Purdue could have some problems uh, protecting Blau. And we did see David Blau a couple times last week uh, run himself into some sacks. I, I really think that could be a problem for Purdue if they don't have time to take advantage of the secondary weakness. Then, then they're gonna, going to have trouble moving the ball. And, and Michigan State's weakness in, in the secondary is a lot of it's due to injury, and of course, to that injury also at linebacker. Purdue has injury issues obviously Jimmy Herman will not play tomorrow um, and that certainly is a problem from the defensive side DJ Knox where, where are we with DJ at this point DJ will play um, at least that's what he's told me earlier in the week and then Daryl Hazel kind of confirmed that last last night on his radio show Dominique Young yeah, is the starter right. who is going to, to miss the game with concussion the, the receiver after took that really really vicious hit last week and that means Gregory Phillips will be kind of put in that role. Um, and, and Kyle talked to, to Greg this week, and I think, you know, he's a guy we've seen, yeah. you know, especially in the off season, you know, in, in early training camp practices, that is a guy who has definitely gotten better, you know, since he was and kind of thrown in I last I don't year. think a whole lot of drop off there, really, and maybe, you know, has a little bit better chemistry with Blau right now because those yeah. two guys were uh, with the twos for the last <laughs> few weeks until, you know, Blau became the starter. And, Actually, talking to Gregory Phillips too a little bit, he said Blau was the first quarterback when he got here. He started throwing around right. with a little bit, so they had a pretty good connection. I don't know if that'll hurt Purdue. I, I do think the loss of Herman is a big one. Um, Andy Garcia got the start last week, and I think that he did okay. Uh, this is going to be a bigger test, yeah. and we'll see how much he plays. I think Purdue, you know, maybe will look to do something a little bit different. I, I don't know exactly what that will be, but um, they have now a situation where they have to almost protect their linebackers a little bit and we didn't anticipate that being the case coming into the season but without Herman out there and without Marcus Bailey of course who plays the same position also Purdue sort of thin their linebacker. The three-man rush and I know you asked that question to Greg Hudson and we've had some questions about that all throughout the course of the week. I thought in coordinator's corner that uh, that Greg was uh, somewhat matter-of-fact about uh, the performance of that even on the, on the, on the, on the one-man rush plays. <laughs> Expound on that. Uh, well, I, thought, of the I, mean, I thought Stacy, you know, illustrated yeah, it absolutely. well in the Boilermaker breakdown too. But you know, they, I mean, they intended to do um, what they did. <laughs> keep them in keep, uh, to keep <laughs> biggest keep game twenty nine yards by Bowling yeah, Green. I mean, right? they, they wanted to keep uh, Bowling Green from going over the top, and they did. 
I, I think you can look at their game plan and in a lot of ways feel like it did pretty well. They didn't want to let the, the, the ball get over the top. Uh, and they, you know, like you said, they, they kept Bowling Green's longest play to 29 yards. Now what needed to happen differently, I think, is in those three and four man rushes, they needed to tackle the quarterback. Right. And a couple of times, the Should quarterback got right. loose and that just really right. killed them. And if they would have tackled better in those three and four man fronts, I think maybe we'd be talking a little bit different right now. Well, and I think specifically you had asked about the three man front. I right. think that people maybe assumed that they were in that a lot more than they actually were. Right. Um, you know, it's premium but content on our website. Right. But so they were exactly in there. how many plays they yeah. did that, and it maybe wasn't as many as people think. But they were in there in times when you're, you know, at times where you know it's third and long or whatever, where, where it seemed to be, ma it seemed to be to be magnified. Right. And whether that's again, I, I I buy the notion that the plan wasn't uh, flawed. I didn't think that uh, yes, yes, you know, Bowling Green throws for 402 yards. The key thing, and, and that one is still being able to stop them in the last possession, and that's been a bugaboo of Purdue's for I, a long time. Even before this week, I've asked Greg Hudson what, and I think I did it uh, during an interview before the season started, what yeah. defensive stat or what offensive stat that as a defense do you just not care as much about? And his immediate answer was passing yardage. He just doesn't, he doesn't put that big a stock in, in what a team passes for as far as yardage. Now, efficiency, yes, that matters. Uh, and efficiency is like, you know, interceptions and uh, yards per completion, yards per attempt, uh, things of that nature. But just the, the, the total number of yards, he doesn't care all that much about because there can be a whole lot of factors in, involved in that. And he felt like Purdue's pass efficiency defense could have been better, and it could have. They had a couple opportunities for some interceptions that they did not get. Mm -hmm. And then certainly allowing Matt Johnson to, to run around a few too many times along with the penalties hurt him in that last time. quarter. It's going to be a different defense this week, though. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's a different yeah. team. It's, it's uh, you know, far different, one. far different team. So, you know, it hasn't of, played that, at least statistically, that great defensively, Michigan State, but they they have the ability to. Right. Do that. I think 12 consecutive 30 point games, you know, for yeah. Michigan State, which doesn't sound too bad. You know, <laughs> even if, if you struggle, how do you struggle to get to 30? I think Purdue would like to be in that situation to struggle and get 30 points every week. But for what, whatever reason, I think Purdue's defense has played better against these type of yeah. pro style. Yeah. Uh, type approaches, you know, Michigan State, Iowa, uh, maybe Notre Dame a little bit, though they spread things out a mm -hmm. little bit more here recently. But, you know, I think in that respect, maybe it's an okay matchup for Purdue. But again, the, the key to me comes the other direction, whether Purdue's offense will be able to stack up against yeah, the yeah. Spartan defense. Yeah. yeah, and score enough to, to be, as we say, the word every week, relevant in a football game for four <laughs> quarters, and that's uh, that's going to be an interesting The problem is, though, they're one and three, and they need to be more than relevant oh, no. right now. they got to win games, and I just yeah. think this weekend doing that is going to be a challenge. One question I had for, for, you, for both of you, I'll start with you, Stacy. just the whole notion of because you're out there every day, you see them on Tuesday and Wednesday, and, and get do they bounce? Do you sense this team is resilient about where mm -hmm. you know they're one and three? That's disappointing, but they, a lot of people hope to fans hope they would be three and one. Do you sense that's reality? Are they bouncing back like they always say about those old college young college kids? They just forget <laughs> forget two days later. Is that fair to say? They're definitely saying the right things, but I think more than that, you can see their attitudes in practice, and I, I, I personally haven't really noticed. You know, at least across the board, you know, guys being frustrated or that really showing up. I mean, I think that, you know, they really seem like they're able to come back out and focus on what's next, you know, by the time Tuesday rolls around. Now, maybe if we saw them Sundays, that would be a different story. Yeah. Um, but we don't. So, and I think part of that probably is, is you know, from Daryl Hazel. I mean, we talked to him on Monday. Um, even when you talk to him after the game, I mean, you <laughs> would have no idea if Purdue won or lost. I mean, that's just what he is. It's just really level. Um, so I think maybe some of that can be rubbing off on the, on the team, and, and that is, that's what you need. I mean, when you're struggling, yeah. you've you yeah. got to be able to, you know, not go too low, you know, when, it, when it's time. We, saw one, we saw one instance of one player getting a little frustrated. Yeah, I think. but and, I thought maybe, that was based on the drill. Yeah, but, yeah, I mean, not to go into too much detail, because these type of things happen sometimes. And it was in my Wednesday practice points without naming the guy. Um, but, you know, I think that it's a team that, that has guys that want to win. Yes. I, I always think it's funny when, you know, we read on our message boards after the game, like, you know, do, do they care? Do the coaches care? Do the players care? And the answer to that question is very much a yes. Yes. The coaches care. They do want to win, and the players do too. They're just not, not able to do so right now. They're not yep. making the plays to be able to win.
you look at the, you know you look at the last eight games on the schedule, and we again probably a weekly question. There still are, in my view, six that are right in front of them that that they should should be at least three to four quarter games. I'm not including tomorrow's matchup as one of those eight games, and I think probably Wisconsin on the road is one. But that's what's really it does set up as interesting as you know we always say in the office nothing is as good as it seems, nothing is as bad as it seems. Is there really some opportunity for this thing to get turned around and, and that you can win five or six games? I mean, or, or maybe maybe you start with winning a second game, I guess. That would be a better thing. I mean, if you're Purdue, that's exactly. I mean, you have to look at it that way. You know, we talked about that a little bit on uh, the, the podcast today. Um, you got to, you have to compete yeah. this week. I mean, to feel like you can feel pretty good about yourself playing Minnesota. I mean, certainly Minnesota and Michigan State are a different caliber of team, but I think you need to at least get something out of this week that you can feel good about and take that into, you know, next week in a game that you, you do have a, you know, a better chance to win. So I think it, uh, it depends on kind of what happens this week, but I don't know. It's, it's. There is a lot of season left. You know, Daryl's been talking about we're zero and zero. You know, it's a fresh start. You have that's the way you have to look at it. Um, but yeah, like you said, you just got to get one win. Just yeah. just get the next I'm not, one. I'm not counting for ahead. sure. I'm not. It should be silly to count ahead. Any, anything different to add to the fray there? <laughs> <laughs> you're just you're going to have to make plays in one of these games at some point. It's just hard. To, it's hard for me to sit here right now and say, yeah, they have a chance against Minnesota and Nebraska. I mean, uh, they'll be reasonable underdogs to those two teams, I yes, suppose. Somewhere between seven, what, seven and ten points, probably. I agree, I would agree. Uh, home games, so yeah. you could sit here and say, okay, yeah, you know, you have a chance there, but it's it's hard to do that when they continue to do things and different things to lose right. games in the fourth quarter. And, yeah. you know, this week it was, it was penalties and not being able to tackle suddenly, and then you know, bogging down a couple of times in the red zone when they had chances maybe to to put a team on the ropes a little bit. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the most hey. question, well, and I, I think that that's all all absolutely true. Though it is amazing, even when we see Daryl on Wednesdays is at the at a, at the downtown gridiron again, very very focused. You leave there thinking that, um, and I think Daryl's got to feel that way as a head yeah. football coach. He's got to present uh, and. Pro project that attitude that uh, things are okay we got th we have things to fix he would say but uh, we can fix them being produced so that's a, that I think is a notion that uh, uh, is important. Paul Griggs is somebody that we've uh, certainly been around for a long time and has had an up and down career certainly up last year uh, not as much this year certainly I've had numerous questions about is he hurt is he whatever I don't think that's the case, uh, but yet it's been disappointing f to him, too, as being a competitor to getting the job done critical last week uh, that, that those didn't convert. I think he's more upset about it than we are. I, yeah. I, can fair, I, I know fairly that's the case. Really say, I know say that's that. the case. Kicker's that he way. He doesn't appear to be hurt. I mean, if he is, then nobody's saying anything about it, and he looks perfectly healthy. Yeah. He just is missing. And he has had cases earlier on in his career where uh, he wasn't as consistent as you wanted, and you always sort of feared, at least I did, I'll speak for myself, that if he got into a situation where he was uh, off and shaky with the confidence, how quickly would he be able to get it back? And right now, his confidence is pretty shaken, and I think that he needs to have some success to try and get that back. The problem is going to be... In what situation is Purdue now going to put him out there to kick a field goal? Well, and, and tomorrow will be in a gale storm, too. That's yeah. the other yeah. problem. You, you know, you got another issue there. You may have 35-mile-an-hour winds they're talking about. You know, again, he's a guy and, and when, you, when you're when you having a hard time scoring. And, I mean, last week was obviously case in point. You just have to make those. Well, I mean, Purdue uh, had a chance to kick. I think it would have been a 42-yarder. They had a fourth and nine, which yeah. is a long distance yep. to be going for it. And Purdue went for it. Yeah after he had missed the first one, the 19-yarder, and, and Purdue picked up that first down on a nice play to Anthrop, yeah. probably Danny Anthrop's best play of the year, I would guess. But, uh, you know, I, I would imagine that Purdue will go for it on fourth downs in that area. Now, they might let him kick him from 35 and in, and, and I think he probably needs to hit that first one yeah, to did. give Purdue a little bit of confidence in him. But he will be the guy. I mean, no doubt. Their backup is Thomas Meadows, who doesn't really kick. He has said before he doesn't want to do it. Uh, so he won't do it. It'll be Griggs, and he needs to make them. 
Well, and, and Paul was good in practice this week, but the thing is, is he has been pretty good in practice all yeah, year. Yeah. So it's just a matter of him getting out there. And, you know, when I talked to him this summer, first story I did in our preview magazine, and, and he said that was kind of the, the shift in his mind that he needed to make, you know, from his sophomore to his junior year, is just to translate what he was able to do in practice to do it during games. And he thought he found wherever that formula was. He, he wasn't really specific. Yeah. Um, but did it. it and, and it obviously, and it, and it happened, and it worked. And so, like, whatever he found out, you got to, I mean, obviously, I'm sure he's trying to go back to what that was, you know, to make this this happen for him again. It can't be an easy thing. Yeah. I mean, when you get in a rut right. like that, I mean, I'm a pretty mediocre golfer, but you can get it going occasionally, but as soon as it, like, goes away, it's tough to get it's it back. It's tough to get it back. <laughs> and, and, pressure. and imagine when you're in front of thousands of people yeah. who are all watching, the pressure's on you, and it goes away. Now, now kids do it all the time. And they make them all the time, and we see it across the country. And Paul needs to get back to that, but it's it's a difficult thing. And and you know when you have people yelling at you too and picking on you on social media, it doesn't doesn't help. That make it easier. Yeah. And they don't yell at me while I play golf. At, at least they, they should. But <laughs> Can you imagine that though? Playing, yeah. trying to hit the ball down the middle of the fairway with three thousand people yeah, watching. Yeah, I thought no I chance. It'd be a great sport if they allowed them to do that. All right, we're going to let you guys go. Uh, Stacy will be heading up north, so will Kyle tomorrow morning. But this is a uh, big game for tomorrow. Every game is a big game in the world of college football when you only play 12. I want to thank our sponsors again, State Farm Agent Trent Johnson, Hilton Garden Inn, John Basham, and the folks at Basham Rental and Triple X. You can text us. We're, having a, we're making sure that I'm not 100% sure if I'm getting your questions back and forth, but we will have Ray Davis on in this next segment. And then, of course, Coach Matt Painter at about 155. So make sure you stay tuned. If you've missed the first segment or, or, or missed one of those segments, we'll also have it on later tonight. Thanks, you guys. Have safe travels up north, and we'll look forward to uh, seeing your work on the site uh, all next week. We'll be back in a couple minutes on Golden Black Live.